Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can we give Jesus another praise? Give him some praise. Amen. So welcome to Power Service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I received that. We know. Amen. We're taught good here. We know that there's not a better place for you to be. God bless you, folks. God bless you. Not a better place to be than right here in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So when I got the call, this is what I said. (gasps) And then I said, okay, calm down. You know what to do. It's in you, just like it's in all of us. Amen? It's in us. God's word is in us. And we need, God bless you, we need to be good distributors of the word. Amen? Good distributors. So, um, like I said, we know where we're supposed to be. And this word is just for you. It was for me first, but it's for you too. Amen? And I want to thank I want to thank the Lord for the honor and privilege of standing here and sharing his word with you. Amen? So um, I'm so very thankful, too, for the word that he's placed in my heart to share. And if you need a title for tonight, there it is. Get ready for impact. I shared it with Benai, and he goes, oh, boy. I don't know if they're going to like that word, but praise the Lord. He's such an encourager. Amen. So if you will turn in your Bibles to 2 Timothy, let's get to the word. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. And when you're there, say Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. I want to pray real quick, too. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this night. I especially thank you, Lord God, for each and every person, Lord God, that sowed into my life and my family's life, Lord God. Return unto them, Lord, more than they could even imagine or think or even ponder, Lord. Thank you for your seed sowers, Lord. Return unto them 1,000 times, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Everybody there? Okay. So the word of the Lord says, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. I'm reading from the Passion Bible. It says, Proclaim the word of God and stand upon it no matter what. Everybody say that. No matter what. No matter what. Amen. No matter what. Everybody, wait, excuse me. Everybody say it one more time. No matter what. Amen. Then it says, rise to the occasion and preach when it is convenient and when it is not. It goes on to say here, preach in the full expression of the Holy Spirit with wisdom and patience as you instruct and teach the people. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that is life to us, Lord God. And Lord, help us to apply the word that we receive tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let me get to the rest of the scripture (laughs) or scriptures. Let's see here. Oh, there it is. Come on. Technology. Okay, right here. So we just read verse 2. And then verse 3 says, For the time is coming when they will no longer listen and respond to the healing words of truth because they will become selfish and proud. Haven't we been seeing that over these last months? Oh, my gosh. It's all over the television. You hear about it on the radio. I mean, so much of that is going on. 
selfish. The people, they'll become selfish and proud. It goes on to say they will seek out teachers with soothing words and line up with their desires, saying just what they want to hear. Verse 4 says, they will close their ears to the truth and believe nothing but fables and myths. Verse 5 says, so be alert. One more time. Be alert. This is totally for me. <laughs> to all these things and overcome e every form of evil. Carry in your heart the passion of your calling as a church planter and evangelist and fulfill your ministry calling. Oh, my goodness. You know, all of us are ministers, right? Each and every one of us, we are. Even if you don't think you are, you are. Thank you for that amen, Uncle. <laughs> we are. We're all ministers. And we need to remember that. I, I, I know that, you know, sometimes the Lord will speak to me and say, oh, go talk to that person. And... You know, see if you can help them or see if you can do I go, that person over there? Really? Right now? I gotta get going. I gotta get I got something to do. I was like, <laughs> stop yourself. Be alert. Amen. Stop and listen to what the Lord is saying. There's a reason why He's directing you in that way. Or to that person. They need something and He's trying to get something to them. So you are the one that he's asking. Believe you me, if you don't do it, he's going to find somebody else to help them. Amen? But why? Why don't you help when you can help? I, I'm guilty. Me, right now? It's not real convenient right now. <laughs> it's not convenient for me right now, Lord. I got to get to where I'm going. I got so much things to do. You need to stop your busyness. And do what God says first. Then all those other things will fall into place. Amen. Amen? So I looked up the word impact. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> impact means to drive close, to press or drive firmly together, to touch. Amen? We're supposed to reach out and touch people who don't know the Lord. Amen? We need to get busy. It means impression. It is the effect or influence of one person, thing, or action on another. Just what I said. If the Lord directed you to go that way to help that person or say something, say Jesus loves you or God loves you, you need to do it when God says it. So what if it's inconvenient for you? <laughs> So what if you got so much things to do? So what if your schedule is so busy? If you make time for God, he will make time for you. Amen? Amen. So when I was looking at the word, um, oh well, the verse that we read earlier, uh, proclaim stuck out to me. And so I went and looked up the word proclaim. It says to cry out. You know, when we needed help, God was there. Didn't you cry out? I mean, travailing kind of cry out when you needed God's help for your sick loved one, for your marriage not doing well, for your finances all in shambles. Didn't you cry out to the Lord? Your house needed fixing. Your car needed fixing. I mean, don't only cry out when you need him. Cry out all the time. Amen? Proclaim all the time. Proclaim also means to announce, to declare with honor, to make public. Okay, so who, who can we impact? There's a lot of people that need impacting. <laughs> oh, I wanted to share the other word that really stuck out to me. It says um, similar words. Collide, clash, jolt, knock. So 
collide, clash, jolt, not affect and influence. Who are you influencing? And how are you influencing them? Is it a godly influence? Or are you grumbling? Are you magnifying the Lord and thanking Him for everything? Or are you talking behind someone's back? Things we need to check. Amen? Things we need to be alert about. Don't take things for granted. We know tomorrow's not promised. So a very wise man told me, don't leave things for tomorrow. If there's things that need to get done today, do it today. Don't leave it for tomorrow. Well, we know why. Tomorrow's not promised. So important. If you start something, you need to finish. Don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it. Too many times, oh, yeah, I got it. I can do this. No problem. Then it gets down to the ah! When it gets down to the wire, oh, my gosh, I don't know if I'm going to make it. You have to. Ask for help if you need it. Amen? Don't be so, uh, what is the word I want to use? I don't even know what word. <laughs> but I know that sometimes we think we can do it. And we don't need nobody's help. But everybody needs help. Amen? We all need help in different areas. You know, all of us have different gifts. All of us can do certain things better than other people. All of us have these gifts that God has blessed us with. And so we need to be sure to use those gifts. Use it or lose it. We don't want to lose it, right? We want to use it. And then if you can, or if your neighbor needs help, help them. It's a God thing. It's not a self thing. Amen? So let's turn to Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61, and we're going to start at verse 1. And I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation this time. Everybody there? Everybody there? Okay. And the word of the Lord says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me. He's upon you too, everybody out there. For the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed to declare honor as to proclaim the name of the Lord that is to declare his perfection amen so we know that we are in a world where there's so many that are just broken hearted amen they need the Lord they need comfort. They need peace. Amen? They need to get rid of the things that are not of the Lord. Anxiety, stress, high blood pressure, diabetes, all these things that are not of the Lord. And so they need to know all about him. He's their healer. Once you receive him, he's your healer. He's your provider. Amen? But if they don't know him, how are they going to believe it? How are they going to know? Reach out. We need to touch. Amen. We need to impact this world as never before. Starting with our state. Starting with our island. Starting with our neighbors. Starting with our community. Amen. Our co-workers. Our workplaces. Even at the doctor's office. Amen. Maybe they got a report that wasn't so good. And they're looking like, oh, no. And now they've got to come back for another test. 
Well, hello, you know the healer. Amen? God is good at directing and instructing. Amen? Holy Spirit is good at doing that. He'll send you to that exact person. You know, I like it when um, I see people go and pray. I mean, I don't know if they can still do it now, but when they were going to the hospital and praying, and the, the faces would just light up when you walk into the room. Oh, can I pray for you? Yeah, because they know that someone greater than themselves sent somebody to help them. Amen? Send somebody that's going to give them hope. Send somebody that's going to share faith with them. Oh, my gosh. The faith that they need to get through whatever they're going through. Amen? God is in the saving business. I'm going to read from Exodus 33:19. give you a moment to get there. Exodus chapter 33 verse 19. Amen. And the Lord replied, I will make all my goodness pass before you and I will call out my name Yahweh before you for I will show mercy to anyone I choose and I will show compassion to anyone I choose. Amen? Anyone. He's no respecter of persons. He loves us all the same. I know we always hear it, but we're all his favorite. Amen? He makes a way there when there's no way. With your natural eye, you're looking and saying, there is absolutely no way this is going to work. No way, no how, I just don't see it. And then, bam, God, God's will and God's purpose and God's grace and mercy and favor, boom, collides with us. Amen? And things start to happen. Not because of me, not because of you, but because of God. You know, it was a great time when we went to the women's gathering in Ka'anapali. Oh, my gosh, we had such a good time. And um, <clears throat> it, the title for it was Known. Everybody knows. But, I mean, really, we are known by God. He knows everything about us. What we're going to do, before we're going to do it, when we're going to do it, what we're going to say. I mean, he just knows everything about us, every hair on our head. Amen? He sees us the finish the finished product. I said that uh, when I was uh, ministering, I had the privilege of ministering down there too. I'm under construction. <laughs> God is still working on me. He's going to work on me all the way till I go home to heaven. Amen? One step at a time. One day at a time. One hour. One minute. One second. He is continually working on us. But it's our choice if we want to be worked on. I want to. <laughs> I need it. Yeah, he's continually working on us. Continually showing us the way. Continually placing people over us to mentor us, to help us, to instruct us for your good, for your sake. Always. It's for your betterment. You know, Pastor Ho'olulu said it. He's trying to get something to you, not take something from you. Sometimes we get it twisted. What? Really? Yes, really. <laughs> He's trying to get something to us, not take something from us. And I think sometimes we lose track of that we get so caught up in whatever's going on, what's happening, what we're doing, what we have to do. Wives, moms, dads, you know, our jobs. You know, as our parents get older, our parents, we help take care of our parents too. Amen. We honor our mothers and our fathers. 
just so many things. But remember, you, you, you can't do, hello, you can't juggle through life trying to juggle everything all over, <laughs> continually juggle, because you might miss one juggle and the da 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 God's way is the best way, the most perfect way. His plan is perfect. He doesn't need to ask permission because he knows what's best for us. He gave us the best sacrifice, his son Jesus. Amen? I want you to know that you are God's agent. Can I get an amen? <laughs> you are. You're God's agent, each and every one of you. And when I looked up agent, it says, and this Keep in mind, you're God's agent, so you're acting on God's behalf. Sustaining action, the body agent. I said, oh, yeah, the body of Christ. We are supposed to be leading more people to the Lord. Amen? So we're God's agents for the body of Christ. The fields are ripe for the picking. There's so many people right now with all that's going on that are looking for hope. They need faith. They're looking. They need to find something that they can trust in. They can trust in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen? But who's going to tell them? We are. We need to get so busy for the Lord. For God's kingdom. If you're an agent, God's agent, you are an active power for God's kingdom. Power. Everybody say power. power. Come on. Say it like you mean it. Power. There you go. You are an active power for God's kingdom. That means you're powerful because of God. Amen. Amen. Doesn't matter if you're a little bitty or if you're tall and strong or if you're in the middle. You can be used by the Lord for kingdom work. And like I said earlier, we are ministers for the Lord. And when you are a minister, you are one who is entrusted with the business of another. Yeah, we are entrusted with God's business. He entrusted us to share his love so that others would come. And I like uh, what Pastor Russ said la you know, last week when he was talking about all they're going to have to do is walk in and they're going to be healed. That is like so exciting. Like super exciting. I mean, I got goosebumps on the inside. All they're going to do is have to walk in the door and the presence of the Lord is going to hit them, and they're going to be healed. That is amazing. Amazing grace. Amen? Unmerited favor. They're going to walk in, and boom, they're going to get jolted. They're going to get jolted, and they're going to be healed. That's exciting to me. Amen? Amen? And we are also moral agents for the Lord. So everything needs to be done in decency and in order. Morals are important. Your values are important. Make sure that they're God's values and God's morals. Amen? So, so very important. We also are God's representatives. So when you represent the Lord... Make sure that you have it on the mark. A representative is one that exhibits the likeness of another. So we were created in God's image. So when we carry ourselves as God's representative, we have to show that. Since we were created in God's image, shine your light for the Lord. Amen? Amen. Shine the light so that they will be attracted to the Lord, not to you, but to the Lord. 
Because the Lord has so much in store for them. He does. We know. We just need to let others know. There should be a lot more people in these seats over here. But God knew who needed to be here. Remember, you are an agent and a representative for the Lord. God's agent and representative. That's an important position. It is. Very important. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse number 10. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 says, Now, my beloved ones, I have saved these most important truths for the last. Be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in and through you. Put on God's complete set of armor provided for us so that you will be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. Your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms, for they are, power for they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. Because of this, you must wear all the armor that God provides so you're protected as you confront the slander. For you are destined for all things and will rise victorious. Put on truth as a belt of strength. Put on truth as a belt to strengthen you to stand in triumph. Put on holiness as a protective armor that covers your heart. Stand on your feet alert. Then you will always be ready to share the blessings of peace. In every battle, take faith as your wraparound shield, for it is able to extinguish the blazing arrows coming at you from the evil one. Embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance like a helmet to protect your thoughts from lies and take the mighty razor sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of God pray passionately in the spirit as you constantly intercede with every form of prayer at all times pray the blessings of God upon all his believers pray also that God's revelation will be released through me or you Every time we preach the wonderful mystery of the hope-filled gospel, yes, pray that I may preach the wonderful news of God's kingdom with bold freedom at every opportunity. Hallelujah. Even though I am chained as a prisoner, I am his ambassador. Amen. So even though we have things going on with us that are not right, hallelujah, we know the Savior who can make things right, who can help us get rid of those things, bad attitude, um, whatever it is. He can help us get rid of those things. Amen. Remember that you are God's agent. You are his representative. We are ambassadors of his love. Amen. Reverend Ty is a perfect example of that. He's an ambassador of God's love. And the 
all through Asia and wherever he's gone to minister. And how many people still need to know? Right here in Kahului, right in Waiehui, right in Waikapui, wherever we're from, up country, Makawao, Pukalani, wherever it is, so many more people need to know the Lord. And it's our job to get that word to them. Amen. And you know, like Apostle Rocky shared, it's, you don't have to go, thus say it. I mean, you're not going to go. <laughs> They're going to feel God's love. You don't have to be quoting scripture to them. They're going to know something different about you. How you help, how you care, how you speak. They're going to know that there's something different about you. And they're going to know they're going to want to know what that is. What is that special something? That special sharing right now. What is that smile brother Martin sharing? How come he's always so happy? They're going to want to know what you're about. And what are you about? You're about God's kingdom and God's kingdom work. And with that, you get to share. Maybe not the first time, maybe not the second. Who knows? One water, one, one plant, one water, right? And God brings the increase. It's God's business. And we need to make it our business. So, so important. I mean, even for our children, it amazes me how excited they are to be at Children's Church. How excited they are to learn a lesson. I read in my devotion the other day about how we need to have childlike faith. Childlike faith. Not big grown-up faith. <laughs> childlike faith. It's going to get you through. In the word it said, God said, bring the children unto him. Uh, Jesus, excuse me. Bring the children to him. And, and he shared, this is the kind of faith you need to have. Nah, grown-up faith. <laughs> I mean, grown-up faith, we know what we're talking about, but childlike faith, that's all you need. It'll get you a long, long way. Amen? So I've said all of this to say, and I'm reading from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 22. The Lord be with your spirit, and grace be with you for the work that you need to get done. Amen? For the work that we need to get done. We need to get busy for the Lord. And don't be so busy with ourselves. Don't be too busy. I know we've heard it before, but the reminders are good. Don't be too busy with yourself and, busy and not be alert to what God is trying to tell you. Get more into your word. We all need to do that. Get more into your word and follow God's instructions. He's trying to get something to us, not from us. And he needs our help. We are his extension here on earth. There's a reason why you got saved. It's not by chance. I received the Lord oh, a lot, when I was 18 years old. And I started going to church, and the, the friend that I was going to church with had moved away. She got married. We used to work at the Hilton Hawaiian Village together on Oahu. And um, then another friend and I were like going around trying to, because the church we attended closed for some reason. I don't know. I think they lost their lease. So we were going around looking for a church, looking where can we fellowship? You know, we went to this church and that church and that church. Well, hello, when we didn't find a church and our schedules got changed, right back into the world I went. Right back into what I, what I, what I knew from before instead of sticking with it and then when I moved to Maui 
and got married and I had children, I said, well, oh, no, no, no. I'm a mom now. Can't be letting... The parents can't be partying and let the kids just run around. That's not how it works. There has to be some kind of order. And so I started going to church. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I got saved again and started going back to church. And then uh, the kids really didn't want to go. And so my husband said, oh, well, no, they don't want to really want to go. Just let them stay home. Uh-uh. He said, well, they don't want to go. I said, I didn't ask them if they wanted to go. And I would tell them on the side, I said, get in the car right now. <laughs> you better get in the car right now. Don't, don't even think you're staying home. You're not staying home. And I kept saying it until it was automatic. They just got in the car. Of course, they're adults now, and they're adulting is what, I, what the term is, they, they say. Oh, yeah, we're adulting. Okay, well, whatever. But the Lord said to me, Acts 16, 31, me and my house, me and my house will be saved. Amen? I don't need to worry about it because God said it, and that settles it. And he also said that even though they go on their own merry way, they're not going to go too far. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. For the word of the Lord. <laughs> Amen? So even for you, if there's a situation that looks like, oh, no, <laughs> how is this going to work out? How am I going to get through this? How can I get through this? Let me say, the Lord is there to help. And he has agents and representatives and ambassadors that will come alongside you and help you too. Don't try to be Rambo and do it by yourself. There's girl Rambos too, okay? <laughs> Don't try to do it by yourself. Let the Lord lead. Amen? And if there's someone watching that does not know the Lord, you've never had the pleasure of being introduced to him, I would like to take this time right now to introduce him to you. It will be the best introduction that you've ever had. He is wanting to send help. Amen? Surround you with his love. Make a way where there seems to be no way. He wants to do it for you. He wants to help you. And he has people that he'll send your way to help. I believe everybody here is saved. I believe so. So if you're watching and you want to know all about him and you want to become part of this family, God's family, this body of Christ, just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, please forgive me for all my sins. Wash me clean. Thank you for your son, Jesus, our Savior. I receive him now into my heart to be my Lord and Savior from this day forward. And Lord, I know that I will never ever be the same again. Hallelujah. Welcome to the family. So if you prayed that prayer, uh, give us a call. The number is 808-871-6843. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to, if you're in our neighborhood, in Kahului, we'd love for you to come and join us. If you don't have a church, you're on an outer island and you want to be connected, we'll be happy to find churches in your area so you can get hooked up and connected and collide with God's kingdom workers. And if you enjoyed the message this evening, 
there is a green button at the top if you go to www.wordoftruthmaui.org. There's a green button at the top. All you have to do is press the green button and follow what it says. And you can be a seed sower to further God's kingdom work. Amen. We love you. God bless you. And I pray God's favor and God's peace and God's power be upon you. Take care. God bless. Aloha.